mind being in the video, sir? Yes. What's the name of the square? It's Talat Harb Square. Talat Harb? Yeah, Muhammad Talat Harb. Were you here uh, 10 years ago? Uh, I'm here since uh, 60 years ago. Do you remember a uh, soccer match against uh, Algeria and uh, Egypt won and there was huge, huge uh, celebrations? Uh, Celebration here, yeah. You remember this? That's right. I was here and I stayed in uh, this place. Welcome, uh, welcome to Egypt. <laughs> cool. And this is your shop, yeah? And yeah. Which kind of things do you have for sale? I uh, sell uh, perfume and papyrus. It's a gift shop, it's a I see. shop. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. All right. right on. Nice to meet you. I'm yes. going walking, so. All right. Okay. Enjoy. All right. All right. So, the uh, footage that you saw at the beginning there, as I showed, was 10 years ago and I was here in Egypt for three weeks. Pardon my voice, I am getting over a uh, really bad cold and I've been pulled up here in uh, Cairo for the past couple of days, not doing much. So, my hotel now is right over there. Let's uh, get across the street. The Nile River is straight down there, but I want to show some things on the uh, street over to the right here. And so, I was last here in Egypt 10 years ago. I arrived three days ago, coming from Erbil, Iraq, and I had booked this uh, hotel here, Grand Royal Hotel, online before coming, and I come walking up the street here. I had uh, gotten a taxi from the airport, and traffic was bad, and so he dropped me off a few blocks down that way, and I come walking up, and I realize I recognize this square and the statue of the guy right there. And so I realized that, coincidentally, I had booked a hotel at the exact same square where I had stayed the last time, 10 years ago exactly, in November of 2009. So, quite a trip. Now I'm going to uh, tell the story of the soccer game, otherwise known as football, so I will call it football in uh, this video. A important World Cup qualifying football match between Egypt and Algeria. I had just finished up my uh, three weeks of traveling around Egypt. I went from Cairo and the Great Pyramids to Aswan in southern Egypt, also called Upper Egypt, because it is up the Nile River. The Nile River flows north here, up through Egypt. And then from Aswan and the Aswan Dam, I went uh, down the Nile, so north, by a Felucca boat to Luxor, where there is the Valley of the Kings and the Valley of the Queens, the uh, pharaohs and their wives. So this is a really cool uh, fast food restaurant, Felfala, that I've eaten at a couple of nights uh, since I've been here so far. And so you can see a uh, shawarma pasta. I got this one, sausages, pasta, sandwiches, some kind of a uh, bread, and then chicken and kebab meat and uh, rice and all kinds of good stuff, really cheap. I also got juice at this place. Orange pomegranate is one of my favorites. And so uh, I was in Luxor and then I went out to the Dakla Oasis and from there traveled uh, north back up to Cairo and was staying here for just a couple of days before I was going to uh, fly back to Greece on that trip. And so there was this match between Egypt and Algeria and the uh, football match may have actually been possibly a determining factor in the revolution that occurred in Egypt in 2011, and I will explain why. So this was a World Cup qualifying match. The winner would go on to the World Cup in the uh, summer of 2010. Egypt won that match. I watched the uh, game in that hotel there, right where I started the video. And as you saw in the uh, footage that I had, then 
Egyptians went wild and were uh, celebrating like crazy in the streets. Now there was a problem, which is that because of the score of the game, then they didn't actually win the uh, qualifying points necessary to go on to the World Cup. And so they had a rematch, again, between Egypt and Algeria a couple of days later. I flew out, flew to uh, Athens, Greece, and had, you know, kind of forgotten about things. And then I see in the news, there is rioting on the streets of Cairo. Totally different from the uh, celebrations that I'd witnessed. They were tearing things apart, protesting at the uh, Algerian embassy, because in that rematch, then Algeria won. And they won the right to go on to the World Cup. And so Egyptians were uh, furious. Eventually things uh, calmed down and Egypt never went to the World Cup. And as most people know, then later, in 2010 and 2011, the uh, Arab Spring began, in which, uh, hello, people in uh, this part of the world started protesting against their governments and toppling them. Now, imagine if Egypt had won the uh, game that I saw, or else the next game, and went on to the World Cup, then summer of 2010 would have been a period of patriotism, of people watching their team go on to uh, the World Cup and competing with other nations around the world. And who knows, if they had done really well, then there might have been even more patriotic fervor and maybe there wouldn't have been the climate of, uh, you know, frustration with the government and distrust and everything that uh, occurred in the uh, course of their revolution here. So who knows, that is total speculation, of course, but uh, just uh, something to think about, how a soccer match could actually possibly have an effect on politics. All right, let's uh, get across the uh, street here. The Nile River is right out there. And so there's a metro station right under here. This is Tahrir Square, the uh, main square of Cairo, where the uh, protests would have been happening during the revolution. And so there's a metro station under there and you can actually go through and uh, get under the uh, road this way and then come up over here. The problem is that uh, there's security that you have to go through. It's quick, but uh, kind of a pain and I wouldn't be able to film under there. I would probably get like interrogated or something if I was filming under there. So just uh, getting across this way and the Nile is just the uh, other side of these buildings here. And so I wanted to discuss a couple of other things in this video. First, uh, my trip here. No, here, no. So that guy said no filming in that area for some reason, but I should be okay here. All right, right up ahead is a, a bridge over the Nile. And so, I'm only in uh, Egypt for five days this time. I arrived three days ago and day after tomorrow, then I'm flying to another country that I've been to before. And the reason that I'm doing a, a short trip here, even though I'm kind of uh, bummed to not see more of Egypt because there's much more because there's much more that I would like to see that I didn't see the last time I was here. I'd love to go to the Siwa Oasis, Alexandria, Hurghada, climb Mount Sinai, Sharm El Sheikh. There's lots more to see here. And Egypt is a really amazing country. But I am just traveled out and that is the reason why I'm not staying here longer and exploring more is all of that requires long bus rides, train rides, etc. through uh, kind of intense territory. It is also much less touristy here than it was when I was here before 
because of the Egyptian revolution and various other events, bombings, there was a, a major bombing at a mosque here a couple of years ago. And so tourism is down and I would likely be like the only or one of the only uh, foreign travelers in a lot of places and stuff and you know that's that's fun and all that's what I just experienced in Iraq we basically didn't see any other foreign travelers in our week in uh, Iraqi Kurdistan and I'm just ready for a break and also a break from making the videos on a daily basis almost and so I'm going somewhere familiar to uh, just kind of chillax for a little bit and decide what I want to do next for the winter and for the uh, coming months. But uh, what a view! This is the Nile River. And so the uh, Mediterranean Sea, right there, or a little ways, a couple hours drive up there. Alexandria is on the uh, Mediterranean up there. It is flowing south to north. And so this is Lower Egypt. This part of Egypt. Upper Egypt is south. So it's kind of uh, contradictory it seems. But it is referring to the river and the fact that you are going up the river this way. South. And so Upper Egypt is Luxor and Aswan. And then uh, Lower Egypt is here with the uh, Great Pyramids. And Giza, which is uh, just uh, over there. If these buildings weren't in the way, you might be able to see the pyramids and if it wasn't so uh, hazy, but they're uh, just straight out there. Great pyramids and the Sphinx. And so tomorrow I'm doing a day tour of the Great Pyramids and also Saqqara and Memphis. So that will be an amazing uh, day in Egypt. I'm going to uh, get down to the uh, side of the uh, Nile here and show the boats. And so here is some Egyptian currency, the Egyptian pound. It cost 10 Egyptian pounds to come into this area here. That's only about uh, 75 cents. Egypt is really cheap. Especially now, because I guess the uh, currency was devalued or something. So 200 pounds, that would be like maybe $15. Oh, uh, no thank you, just, just walking along here. Oh, group boat going? Group. Later. Later? Okay. Okay. It'd have to be a big group. That is a big boat. Hello. Hello. No, thanks. Just walking. Okay, have a nice time. Thank you, sir. Good luck. And I have to admit, there's part of me that's like, why am I uh, leaving? There's so much to see in Egypt. But I'm also really looking forward to where I'm going next and kicking back on a uh, beautiful beach, tropical paradise. A familiar place for a change with uh, lots of travelers, nice and cheap. It's gonna be sweet. And I will probably be uh, taking a bit of a break from videos at least uh, posting less and get some other things done meet up with some fellow travelers do some yoga and read my book that I've been uh, carrying with me for the past five months of traveling Dan Brown uh, wow this is a interesting ship here it's like this total ramshackle cruise ship thing what the hell? Maybe it doesn't actually go anywhere and it just sits here and it's a restaurant or something like that. Blue Nile. Because that does not look... Hello. Yeah. 
encounter of the Mexican and Egyptian civilizations. This mural was created by the Mexican urban mural artists Speyek and Chicks in homage to the bonds of friendship between the Egyptian and Mexican people. Cairo, December 12th, 2016. And it is a really a nice mural. Great Pyramids and the uh, smaller, I forget what they're called, but they're uh, dedicated to the wives of the pharaohs. Horus, the sun god. Anubis, I think. And the uh, Mexican side of things. Here's a great map of Egypt, Mediterranean Sea, Cairo. I am here. Nile River flowing from south at Lake Nasser, one of the largest reservoirs in the world, up to the Mediterranean. There is Alexandria, the pyramids. Hello, sir. Good, good. Just uh, explaining a little uh, Egyptian geography. Yes. Is this your office here? Is this your office here? Yes. Okay, cool. And we have our program here in this side. I see. I'll, sh I'll, sh I'll show it as well. Like with tours or something? or. We have all our program here. Yeah. And we have a whole itinerary if you want. If you want to. I see. Yeah. Take your time here and then check here. Great. We'll give you. Thank you. All right, so uh, the last time that I was in Egypt for three weeks, then I flew into Cairo, went to Giza, is uh, the uh, city that is basically part of Cairo, like the outskirts of Cairo, and that is where the Great Pyramids are, the Great Pyramids of Giza. And then I took a train south up the Nile River to Aswan and stayed there a few nights and then got a uh, ride to the Aswan Dam and saw Lake Nasser and the uh, border with Sudan is down here. Abu Simbel, I didn't go there, sounds really amazing. You have to drive a long ways further south to get there. And then from Aswan, then I caught a felucca boat and did a two day, one night tour up the uh, Nile, or actually down the Nile, downstream. And we stopped at the Edfu temple, and then I got off in Luxor and and there saw the Valley of the Kings and the Valley of the Queens and then I wanted to get out into the deserts of uh, Western Egypt and my guidebook had mentioned that there was no public transportation. It is just really barren, stark desert out here. There's a road that goes out here but there are no actual towns along here. There are towns at the uh, oases over here. And so my book had recommended that I uh, get a group of travelers and we share a taxi and pay for the uh, taxi so that you don't pay for one all by yourself. And I ended up meeting some people at the uh, hostel where I was staying who were interested in doing the same thing. A Canadian girl, a uh, Spanish girl, and a guy from Portland, Oregon. And I'm also from Portland, Oregon, or at least I lived there for a while. And so we shared a taxi and got the uh, long ride about uh, six hours over here.
and went to the Dakla Oasis. And there we uh, stayed in a uh, really incredible oasis resort with a hot tub out in the desert, right by the uh, resort, where we soaked in the uh, hot tub at night and uh, looked up at the starry sky and everything. And then from there, then there are roads that go back up to uh, Cairo this way and you can get uh, a ride up there. And so we got like a, a shared minivan to another oasis up here. It might've been the Farafra Oasis. This is not uh, correct. The uh, pyramids are over here. But uh, there we did a amazing uh, desert two day trip with the guy who took uh, just me and the two girls because uh, the guy from Portland had left and went a different direction or something. And so we went out in the desert and slept in the uh, dunes in the sand. The desert was just the most beautiful thing ever. And then from there I took a minivan back to Cairo. So that was my uh, three week trip 10 years ago. And so here are the uh, different tours. So Hurghada I mentioned is on the uh, Sinai Peninsula. And so the uh, Sinai is right here and Mount Sinai is an amazing uh, experience to hike up there in the middle of the night and then watch the uh, sunrise from there looking out over the desert. That would be really cool to do. And so uh, Hergada is... Oh, here we go. Hergada. Not actually on the Sinai. I didn't realize that. There is a lot to do and see in Egypt. I already have a, a day tour booked tomorrow with my hotel, so I'm all set, but... So another fast food kind of a place. Last night I had a shish tuwuk sandwich, similar to that. There's your uh, typical chicken shawarma and then mixed grill. They're cooking it up right here. Oh. 15 Egyptian pounds for a orange pomegranate juice. That is just one dollar. Excellent deal. And tomorrow, the Great Pyramids. See ya.